Okay, it looks like we're live. Some of you guys might be watching commercial right now, and I appreciate that. But I just want to get this thing started here. So it looks like we've got a bunch of people in the house already. Uh, hello to Jenny and April and Liam, Betsy, Travel Jojo, Dragons of Tears, Betsy, Uniquely Yours, Jonathan. Hello, everybody. Good to see you. It's Wednesday again, and it's the first day of July. How did that happen? So, anyways, first off, I want to just do some little thank yous out there. Uh, some of them I think I thanked during the, the show because they signed up, but we had some new members last week. Uh, so, thank you to Letitia, Teresa, Donna, Shelby, Tie-Dye One, Vicky, and Lisa. And then those were that they signed up either during last week's show or right after it. And then others that signed up during the week were Hannah and Marilyn. And then the donations that we had, they were both in in the live chat here uh, with the, I think, a super chat and a super sticker. So thank you to Annie and Crystal. So, okay. So for all you Rainbow Warriors out there, uh, this week I had another meditation that I did. Oh, there goes my note. Um, and had my little tapestry come in. I, I love coming in and or sitting down and doing meditation to get my my tapestry inspirations. And that's just something that when I say meditation, really I just kind of sit down, close my eyes, and just kind of focus on my breath a little bit just to kind of quiet my thoughts. Might put my hand on my heart and then I think about, you know, tie-dye and just kind of just a general thought about tie-dye and then I all of a sudden I need to pick up my notebook and start to either drawing pictures or writing stuff down. So anyways, so that was where this one came from. So what I'm starting with here is a tapestry that's been soaked in soda ash. It's been spun out so it's barely damp. And then I fold it in half. So this here up here is my center line of the tapestry. And what I'm going to do, uh, this is going to be an incline ice die. So I'm going to fold up around the edges here. So I'm going to fold up the, the two sides here. Let me get this over into the screen. So these are the two sides. Like I said, I folded this in half. So what I'm going to do is pleat up just a few inches away from here. I'm not going to do a straight line. I'm going to kind of do a wavy line here. Just so I have a little bit more texture for my uh, incline ice die. The channels, I, I love the, the flow of the die uh, in those channels. So I'm going to pleat up one side all the way across. This here is the center fold here. I'm going to pleat all the way across the center fold. And then I'm going to pleat down the other side here. So I'm just going, making a big square U-shape around this tapestry here. So before we get started, let me do a couple more shout-outs here. Uh, let's see. Okay, Miss Gemini is in the house. Pam, my mom's in the house. Hello, Mom. Good to see you. Uh, let's see. April, Capricorn Twin. Hey, it's Baby Blue. And I can't quite see that. Is that ML Tuck is in the house. Jonathan, I don't see, know if I said that. And Julie's got her new iPad, so she's on her own account. So hello, Julie. Vic uh, Yachika, I might have pronounced that wrong. I apologize. Uh, Lila, uh, Lila, Jason, Kelly. Georgette, Ned, Shannon, Rhonda. So hello everybody. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Like I say, I'm just going to pleat all the way up and around here and then tie this up with kite string. You can also use rubber bands or whatever method you love for tying. And then we're going to put on a mask and do a little bit of sprinkling of powder dye and do an incline ice dye. So I guess just to show you, like I say, I'm not doing a, a straight pleat. I'm going to do a wavy pleat just because it creates just a little bit more texture. So you can draw this on a little bit just to give yourself an idea, but I'm not even going to maybe follow that exactly here. 
but this here is the the route that I'm going to be going I just doing a few inches away from the center there and all the way down the other side here so that's what we're pleating today Oh, and thank you. Somebody mentioned my Rainbow Warrior shirt. Yes, I just got these in last week and got them dyed up. So these are the ones, if you scroll down below the video, uh, you'll see the, the link for these. And I did uh, min size T, just basic. And this came in the Hanes brand. And then there was a women's relaxed fit like this here. And then the women's narrow fit. And then the kids' tees. So if you want to get one of these and dye your own, Eventually, I also plan to do some screen printing and make some more of these and have them out for sale, the ones that I dyed. And then I think also I'm going to have some vinyls cut that can be purchasable. And you can put one on and on your own dyed shirt. So, But for now, I got uh, these available right below the video. And also, bonus, during the auction period, I'm going to be auctioning, or not auctioning, I'm going to be uh, giving one of these away. This here is, like I say, one of the women's tees. This is the Comfort Fit one, and it came in a Gildan brand. So, and it'll have the Rainbow Warriors on there with Mr. Tie-Dye and just the Rainbow Spiral. So, I'll probably just do a random number thing at the time, right after we finish the auction. I'll give this away to some lucky winner out there. So, but that's for later. For now, let's go ahead and get started in this pleating. So I'm just gonna do little pleats all the way around here. Let's see, where do you buy your tapestries? I get them from sunshinejoy.com. So, and I'll probably try to answer just a few questions. I can't answer really detailed ones. And I can't scroll back, so I just have to kind of deal with what I can see here. So I will try to answer a few questions as I fold this up, because it's just going to be just kind of a long fold. And I'm just reaching out here. I like to have the part that I'm pleating kind of right out straight in front of me. And then you can either pick that up. So I'm just kind of pinching a little bit of that and setting it there right next to it. And going along here. So I'm just kind of following that little bit of a wavy line. And what that wavy line does, instead of creating straight channels, it's going to create some different pockets. So as the die flows on this in the incline, it's not going to just fall in a completely straight line. It's going to be a little jagged patterning going on. Um, I had done some of this type of folding on the incline sun dies and the one snowflake. So it just gave a, just a little extra patterning so and that was kind of what I saw in my my meditation was just having a little bit of a pattern going on there so anyways that's what we're gonna do I love to meditate and get an inspired idea and then be able to sit down and bring it to life so let's see Okay, where do you get your white t-shirts from? Uh, I buy my white t-shirts from sanmar.com, but they need a, it's a wholesale account. The other place that I know people buy t-shirts from is either alldayshirts.com or jiffyshirts.com. And you can usually, I think with those, both of those sites, if you order a certain amount, then you get free shipping. Through Sanmar, you have to have a business license or at least a registered business name to sign up with them. And I, you need to order, I think, $200 worth before you get free shipping from Sanmar. Okay, so we're coming right along here with this. The pleating, when I'm not trying to do it exactly perfect, goes quickly here, so... Let's see. Meditation art is wonderful. Yes, I, I love it. I, and as long as I keep following through with my meditation ideas, they just seem to keep coming to me. So 
that is my plan and whether I do them live here or I just make them up I'm going to be building an album in fact I have a part of an album going with the some of the tapestries I have for sale so I've had a bunch of people asking about where they can buy my other tapestries from so I will put a link here in the box here that's my launch links and in there there's a link to the other tapestries that I have for sale uh, you can click on that that will take you over to Facebook where you can look at the tapestries and then each tapestry has a link to my store where you can actually make the purchase so just trying to streamline it a little bit see I just ordered Dharma Dye and cannot wait for it to get here yes you're gonna love it but yeah Dharma I know they're still backed up and I think they're short on some different colors but I know they're in there working as hard as they can to get everybody's orders fulfilled but once you get them you're just gonna have a blast these colors are just fantastic I've been using them for 20 years myself so okay I'm gonna go ahead and tie this off and then I'm gonna straighten out the rest of this here just get my pleats going on better and like I say I'm using kite string but any method of tying this up is gonna work for you whether you use rubber bands or I know some people use fishing line some people use the zip ties I'm not tying it especially tight just enough to kind of hold it here if I wrap it around a few times, then that kind of locks it in place a little bit where I can tie my knot. Let's see. Gildan. Yes, I ordered the, the Gildan Ultra Tees. Those are the ones I like. They're 6.1 ounce, so they're a nice heavyweight tee, so they're going to last you a good long time. I don't know if that was your question. It kind of scrolled up there. Uh, how much inventory do you need to go to festivals? Uh, I don't know that there's a certain amount that you need to have What I usually did was just took all of the the stuff that I had with me and some of it Sometimes it would all fit out on my racks and other times I had to keep some back in a box and then I could break it back out again So I just say if you're wanting to do a, a festival the bigger the festival maybe the more stock that you're gonna need to have but there is no minimum there's just taking what you have so I wouldn't try to kill yourself making up tapestries uh, inventory whether it's t-shirts or tapestries uh, do you prefer Gildan or Hanes I like the uh, Gildan uh, although the one that I'm wearing uh, if you order one of these through the YouTube uh, Teespring site the men's t-shirt comes in a Hanes and this one here is okay I noticed that it just fits just a little bit different than my Gildan uh, personally I, I like the Gildan but everybody has their own preferences and best thing to do is just kind of try out some different brands and see which ones you like and the heavier weight tees are gonna of course last longer but then they also have a little extra you know when you're dyeing them they take a little extra dye but also just the thickness of tying them so sometimes the, the lighter weight tees are what people like I know Gildan they make them in all different weights I just like the Gildan ultra ones myself so oh, it looks like we have a new tie-dye fan mr. tie-dye fan thank you amber for signing up I appreciate all the support from all of the people that sign up for my channel or they make a purchase through my store or just make a, a donation it really does help me continue to create these videos and I'm I'm loving doing the videos and I always look forward to Wednesdays just because I get to come hang out with all of you it looks like we already have uh, 79 people watching so like I say what I'm doing here is just kind of straightening out a lot of these pleats here uh, just because I zipped down and around the whole tapestry it's just kind of rounded things up a little bit and bunched it up so I'm just trying to flatten things down here uh, do you ship to the UK uh, yes I do but I usually need to have a shipping address so that I can look up a cost uh, most of the time what I've been finding is shipping to the UK costs um, well now I can't say for sure but I think first class is like 18 bucks and then priority mail goes up or it might be 25 bucks but 
if you send me a message, uh, I can check with the post office to see what a shipping cost would be for you. <clears throat> Hi from Pennsylvania. Tina's in the house. And Alyssa in Daja Lee and Capricorn Twin. Good to see everybody here. So how's everybody doing <clears throat> today? How's the weather out there? We're getting some nice sun. I have some clouds, but I can see blue sky out there and the sun is shining. So I'm enjoying the, the weather we have here in Oregon right now. I know last week when I asked that question, a lot of you guys had some hot, hot temperatures going on, and that's a little harder to deal with, but I do like the warmer weather compared to the cold weather, but that's just my own preference. Let's see, thunder and rain, 96 degrees here near Sacramento. Wild storms yesterday, down here in Florida, it's 94 with a heat index of 105, wow. Yeah, that the uh, once you get up over into the 90s and into the hundreds, that's a little harder to take. Okay, I think I'm going to start tying this up now. I kind of got most of these flattened down here. Let's see 97 in Florida. Kansas City, Missouri, it's been humid. Storming in Louisiana. Let's see, oh, it looks like it's only 71 in Pendleton. That's where my family's from, or is that not from? We're from all over the place, but let's see. I missed missed the beginning. What are you making? Um, I folded this tapestry in half, and then I folded up around the outside edge of the tapestry. So. Let me just draw a quick shape here. Let's see, am I in the screen? Yep. So if this here is folded in half. This here is the middle edge. I pleated up this way, over this way. And actually I pleated not straight. I did just a little bit of a wave going down here. So this here is the outside edge. This here is the middle up here. And like I said, I just pleated all the way around here. And then we're gonna do an incline ice die. So I'm just kind of straightening some of these pleats out as I go. Let's see, here in Yakima, Washington, are you 75 with a few clouds? I'm enjoying all of your videos, originally from Salem, Oregon. Oh, awesome. Uh, I lived up in Salem for a while. I've been down here in Corvallis now for eight and a half years, but before that I lived up in Salem and I did the Salem Saturday Market up there for seven and a half years. So I, I enjoyed it up there, but I'm also enjoying it down here in Corvallis. Let's see. What is the best way to see, not to see so much white in your design? Um, part of that is just getting your saturation good, but in the effort to get your saturation down, you need to have your, your tapestry or your t-shirt be just about barely damp or dry when you start adding the dye. If there's too much liquid in it, then the liquid can kind of block up and not allow more dye to flow in there. Uh, the other thing is I, I will open up my cracks and crevices if I have a really thick fold and peek in there for white spots. And if there's white, then I'll go ahead and add more dye to it. Let's see. I'm in Lebanon, close to Corvallis. Yes, I have some friends in Lebanon. And I go there every now and then. I haven't been there, I think, uh, since the shutdown, but I go there. So hello Kim, nice to see you, thanks for joining us. Let's see, where do you tie-dye? Uh, if that's directed towards me, I'm not sure, I didn't, I'm not following exactly, but I tie-dye right in my kitchen here. So I just have 
little corner table set up in the corner of my kitchen and that's where I put my my dies together uh, there will be some times where if I need to work on something bigger I'll go outside and I set up a few few of these tables outside to work okay I think we're just about ready to start sprinkling some dye on this one we might get done with this one it's been taking me about an hour for my tutorials but it means that this one here is an ice dye I might be done sooner than that and we'll just zip right into the auction at that point we have the Mandela from last week up for auction this time all right so I'm just kind of wrapping this up just trying to hold everything in here tight to order a small but decent amount of dyes from Darming Trader Color. What colors and how much would you recommend for someone just starting out with tie-dye? Um, I always recommend the primary colors as uh, the basic for getting getting going and then that way if you need to you can mix the secondary colors but if you're going to also buy the secondary colors then my favorites, and like I say, you can go through the list and pick out your own favorites, but the ones that I like are Emerald Green, Deep Orange, and Plum. And then I also recommend getting at least one black uh, if you're just starting out, and that just gives you more options. But really, it's a matter of how much your budget is. Uh, as far as the, the size, I know that they have the, the two ounce and that will make make you some dye but i think a lot of people find that if they buy the the two ounce ones that's just a little bit small unless they're just doing just a few here and there but if you think you might be getting into it more than that then i would recommend getting at least the eight ounce jar but really it comes down to what your own budget is Okay, so now I'm just using my cuticle pusher here to straighten out a few more of these little pleats in here. Just to give myself a, a better chance of the dye flowing down in these little channels and stuff. One thing I like about the ice dyes, well the incline dyes, is just how the dye flows. But you have to have the, the little channels available for it. So I like to keep my my pleats all separated if possible and I'll pull up some of the shorter ones and poke some of the taller ones down okay yep well I think I'm gonna go ahead and move right along here so we got this all tied up and next thing is we're gonna put it on our rack here and make sure everybody can see that yeah okay so let me see where did I put my colors at here they are So, and I always recommend if you're going to be doing the ice dye or anytime you're handling the powders, I recommend one of these masks here. It's got the little filters on the side. Uh, that's just going to help keep those fine dust particles out of your nose. You don't want them in your nose. And then the colors that I'm going to use today is emerald green, blue violet, dragon fruit, raspberry and peach and let's see I think maybe I'll also use some lemon yellow so I think I'm gonna put the lemon yellow up here on top and then layer my colors down and I'll probably end up with my blue violet down here at the bottom and hopefully then that will my I'll probably put my darker two colors at the bottom 
so that my bright colors, I love how on the incline dies that the, the, the colors run together. So I'm hoping that my yellows, raspberries, and peach and dragon fruit are going to create some nice texture going in through my stuff here. So, oh, and also I'm not going to put my colors on all the way across. Uh, probably a couple of these, I'm going to put them in just a, a patch going across here just to give a little bit more color detail going down the sides. So, like I say, this was just kind of in my, my meditation vision and I'm just trying to kind of follow along. I don't know exactly how it's going to come out. I just have a general idea and it'll probably be one that I play with because I've seen it in lots of different ways. So I had to just kind of pick one for today of this general folding method and we're just going to go for it. So I'm going to put my, my mask on and at that point I won't be able to talk much because you probably won't be able to hear me. If you do hear somebody, uh, it sounds like Darth Vader, that's just me. So here we go. Okay. So we're starting with lemon yellow. Guess what I forgot to do? I got too ahead of myself and didn't wrap this thing up with tin foil. So let's let's do that before I get going too far. No wonder I'm so far ahead. I only did half of it. Hello, Cody. Thank you for stopping in, for showing a little bit of love. I love it when people come in and just say hello or stay here and watch for the whole show. So, thank you. Uh, let's see. What's a metal tip? What's that metal tip for? A metal tip. I don't remember what I showed you guys. What 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 was what the had the metal tip on it? I just have to be a little more careful because I put dye on this already. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's my, my cuticle pusher. It's got a smooth edge on it. I mean, it's used for pushing cuticles, but I use it because it's got a smooth edge and it allows me to kind of poke down in here without tearing a hole in anything. So that's what that is. Thank you for bringing that around so I could understand the question. Okay. So really, this here, I'm just kind of building a little bit of a wall. This here is to hold my ice in place so that it doesn't fall off the edges. I have done the ice dies before and try to balance and stack them on there, but it's much easier if you can build a wall and then just pour your ice on. Oh, it was something Kim mentioned, a metal tip for a uh, small line for black. Yes, I use these bottles here. This here is for my thick black dye, and it's got this small metal tip on it. But also, one of the things I use for my regular dyes are these bottles. I get these on Amazon. These ones here, the black dye ones, I bought. That's a Gouda bottle, and I bought that from Dharma. And these ones, they're a four ounce bottle with metal tips, and I get those on Amazon. And in a, several of my newer videos that have these bottles in them, there's usually a link in the description for those. 
And these, if you just search metal tip bottles, you'll find those on Dharma. And they have two different styles. So they got these ones. So you can choose either one of those. I've used them both. Okay, let's finish building the wall and then we'll get going on the rest of the color placement here. Okay, how do you prevent bleeding when washing? For that, um, there's a few different things that you can do to cut down on the bleeding. Uh, one of them is if you're doing like a red, white, and blue and you're trying to keep white space, uh, I'll use water and sometimes I'll use thickened water in the white areas and I'll squirt it on just like I do with dye. So I keep some, some water in just a squirt bottle and I'll just add it to my white areas. That helps stop the colors from spreading into my white. And then the other thing I do is I'll batch for 48 hours. 24 hours is a good time, but 48 hours does two things. It gives the dyes more time to bond. And the other thing it does is by the time you get ready to do your washing, the dyes are pretty much spent. They only last for so long once the soda ash is on them. So by batching for 48 hours I have less of a chance of that dye being active and backstaining in the washer. And then one last way to do to cut down on the backstaining is adding a Synthropol or Blue Dawn dish soap to your wash load. Uh, the, the pH neutral soap just helps cut down on the amount of backstaining that happens. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to putting my dye on. And one of the things I'm doing is I'm going to leave just a little bit of a white spot up here at the edge. Uh, some of the dye might creep up that way, but if not, then that'll leave me just a little bit of a white edge around there, which is one of the things I see in my vision now. Okay. Oh, so, okay, uh, I just read that Annie says she ordered her Rainbow Warriors shirt last week. Yes, I had seen that I had one person order, and I was wondering if it was you. So, yep, you'll have yours on its way to you. Thank you for that, though. Okay, peach is, but peach is my next color. Raspberry is next.
Okay, dragon fruit is the next color. And Betsy asked if I clean my spoon between times. Usually I do if I'm switching colors. And I forgot to do it when I went from my peach to my dragon fruit there. But yes, I usually try to clean it when I'm going to different colors of dye. From yellow to peach, I don't really need to, I didn't feel a need to do it. But the other ones I do. And I'll clean it now before I go into my green and violet. And blue violet for my last color here. Okay, so there is my, my dye application. Like I say, this is just me playing around with this. I'm still kind of practicing at the ice dyes myself. But this was what I kind of saw in my vision was the different bright colors leaking down through the dark, darker colors. And I just wanted to kind of break this up a little bit to have two different shades coming down. So I think we're gonna go with that for our dye placement. Let's see. Now I'm going to add a little bit of soda ash. Like I say, I soaked it in soda ash, but I always like to have a little bit on here. And eventually I'm going to get to uh, mixing my dye with soda ash once I'm doing even more of the, the ice dyes. 
Uh, I think Gary might have a mixture that he uses of how much soda ash to how much dye. And then that way you just sprinkle one thing on, but I need to get some extra containers so I can start mixing some of those up and figure out which colors do the best splitting. But right now I'm just kind of having fun and just seeing what what we're going to get here. Okay, I think that's good for our soda ash. Now we're going to put some ice on here. And then when we're done with the ice, then I'm going to go right into the auction. And then I'm going to give away one of these Rainbow Warrior t-shirts here. So, let's see. Let me get my ice. Okay. Oh, and I guess one other thing I had seen in my vision was a little bit of black over top of the bottom part of the ice here. So I'm going to sprinkle that on next. Okay, so there's the ice die set up, and then for an incline, I have bottles that I just filled with water here, and they got these pointer caps on here, so they fit nicely in this rack here. So I can lift this up carefully. And I just put one on each side. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is let the ice melt, and after the ice is completely melted, then I will batch this for 48 hours. And then we'll have, of course, a reveal video. Uh, whenever I do the ice ones, the reveal sometimes doesn't come until Saturday, so we'll see how long this actually takes to melt. Where it's a little bit cooler here in Oregon today, it might take longer, so if I don't get the reveal video out by Friday, just be patient. And I'll have it out on <clears throat> probably on Saturday. So let's get some of this stuff out of my way. Okay, yeah, so we got done with that in under two in under an hour. So it's just uh what hour or 45 minutes so that wasn't too bad but we have some extra besides the auction so 
That'll give us more time. Oh, and we have a new member, uh, Steppy Dawn. Thank you for joining up for uh, be a member of my channel. I appreciate all of the support. So, thank you, thank you. Okay. So now, I didn't go get my egg timer yet, but I do have a timer I can use here. So we're going to run, the, but I will open this all the way up as much as I can to show you what the tapestry looks like. So we did the, the Ron star in the middle, and then I did the two orbs, and then the green was the six-pointed star, and then the purple was the 12-pointed, where I, I folded down and then back up again. So this here is the Mandela tapestry. So this is officially open for bid. Let's see. Somebody said lost connection. Just a second. Julie, can you still see me? Okay. Well, hopefully they get their connection back. So this here is going to be my timer. I set it for 10 minutes. And when the, the timer goes all the way down, this here is slowly opening up. Then we'll go ahead and close the bidding out on this. So that's our official timer. If anybody bids like right at the very last second, then we'll probably do it again. But this tapestry is up for bid. So if you guys want to place a bid, go ahead and do that now. And I'm going to take a look, see if I can answer some questions while we do this auction. Oh, it looks like a couple people are talking about having trouble with the feed coming through. It's been running fine for me. But... Yeah, it looks like a couple people. Hopefully you guys get connections back. I don't know what's going on with that, but mine seems to be working fine here. Feed is back, working now, came back, short glitch. Lost connection, refreshed, everything's fine. Okay. Mr. Tie-Dye, can I please have your tie-dye shirt that you wear? <laughs> I'm going to be doing a random number giveaway for that. Let's see. Okay, it looks like everybody's feeds are coming back to normal there. Uh, so, like I say, we got this up for auction. Uh, if you guys want to place a bid, place it now. We're going to do this, this timer here to close it out, just so you have an idea of how long the auction is running for. And if we don't have any bids, then that might be something that I slowly phase out of these. Uh, if you guys, I probably got the, the market pretty well saturated out there with tapestries. So let's see. Yeah, it looks like everybody's feeds are coming back. What is the pink on your sleeve? Oh, that's just my from the the rainbow spiral. I did a, a rainbow spiral on this tee, and the pink just happens to come up over my shoulder here on this side, and on the other side I have yellow and blue. I have a white color pink. Oh, what color pink? That's uh, fuchsia. Sorry, thank you. Nope, this is just fuchsia. And I think I, I might have mixed it a little bit light, or maybe this, this is possibly the, I had some older dyes that I kind of used up. So this here might have been just a little bit old, but yeah, because it, the, the pink is a little bit splotchy here. It's darker in some spots than others, but anyways. Okay, so Jason opens up the bid with the tapestry at 35. Thank you.
what's the name? The name is fuchsia. It's just one of the primary colors. Yep. Okay. I think I'm just, my feed is a little bit ahead of you guys. I'm living in the future again. <laughs> Okay, Amanda bids 40 for the tapestry, and we're about halfway through on our time limit here. So when this circle goes all the way around, we're going to close the bidding, and I'll do a, a one, two, three countdown on it. And if any bids come in right at the very last second, the that eBay bidding, then I'll go ahead and give uh, a chance to bid again. So we're not going to do those last second biddings. If you guys want to bid, go ahead and place your bids now. Let's see, we called it magenta when I was a kid back in the dinosaur times. <laughs> yeah, but officially the, the name with the tie-dye, it's called fuchsia. Wish I had space for it. 45 bid from Jason, thank you. $50 bid from Amanda, so we got a little bit of a bidding war going on here like I say this here is one of the the Dharma or the sunshine joy tapestries it does have the little loops in the corners for hanging uh, $55 bid from Yacheka Yachika. I apologize if I'm pronouncing that wrong uh, let's see, I just started about a month ago before the quarantine started. We just opened up back up two weeks ago on a part-time basis. Oh, that's awesome. I'm glad that you were able to open back up again. I've been lucky that most of my sales and stuff have been online. I've kind of switched over from doing the festivals, uh, partly because my van is broke down, but uh, partly just because I've been doing them for so many years. So. Things have been going well with the online sales for me, but I'm glad you were able to get your physical store back open again. Do you tie over wax for Do you tie dye over wax for text? Oh no, I don't. Uh, for when I do the the text, what I usually will do is tie dye the thing up, and then I go back and I'll spray the area with soda ash, let it dry, and then I use the thick black dye to paint the letters on. I haven't got into playing with the wax yet. It's something that I do hope to get to eventually, but I just haven't gotten that far yet. So, okay, we still have a the high bid of $55 from Yachika. And like I say, I apologize if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Where did you get the tapestry? I buy by tapestry blanks from Sunshine Joy. Uh, they, yeah, Sunshine Joy. If you just look up sunshinejoy.com and you'll find the tapestry tab, you click on that and you go down about halfway down the list, it says uh, blank white tapestries. And I think right now they've only got just two tapestry sizes in stock, but I think on a regular basis, uh, they would have six or eight different sizes. So, and this one here is 54 inches by 56 inches after the shrinkage. Uh, they, when they sell it, it's 58 by 58 inches. So we got just uh, another couple minutes for bidding here and the high bid is still sitting at 55. Yeah, it looks like we got over 100 viewers again, so that's always fun. And like I say, as soon as I get done with this, I'm going to do a random number draw and give away this uh, Rainbow Warriors tee. This is a, a women's size, uh, women's size large in the Gildan Ultra tees. So we'll do that after we get close this out. So right now, the high bid is still sitting at 55 with Yachika. Where do you sign on the tapestry? I sign them in the, the bottom uh, right corner. So the, the, the tag here, well I got this backwards. So this here is the bottom with the tag. So this other corner 
is where I usually sign. I usually just sign right here, sign right here in this corner here. Okay, and that's the end of the auction. So I'm gonna go ahead and close it out. So we have 55 going once. 55 going twice. Fifty-five going three times, and sold for fifty-five to Yachika. So the way that you can pay, let me put a launch links in here. If you click on the launch links, uh, if you scroll down to the bottom, there's either my Facebook message apps or message me through my store. If you send me a message with your email, I can send you an invoice. Or about the third tab down. Let me check here and see. Uh, about the fifth tab down, it says Mr. Tie-Dye Donation Link, and you can click in there and pay. The shipping is $7 in the U.S., so your total will be $62, Yashika, if you live in the U.S., and you can just pay that or send me an invoice, or send me a, your email, and I will go ahead and get that this tapestry signed and in the mail to you after it's paid for. So yes, congratulations. Yeah, I think I am living in the future here. So congratulations to you, Chica. You are the winner of the tapestry. So just send me a message or go ahead and make the payment of 62 and we'll get that all done. Okay, so the next thing here is the Rainbow Warriors, Mr. Tide IT here. So what I'm going to do is do a random number drawing. So I'm going to just, let's see. Well, how about if I just write a random number down here out of your guys' view? Okay. And just for a couple minutes here, you always go ahead and put random number guesses in. And the first person to guess, uh, oh, pick a number between 1 and 75. And when I see the number come up, I will announce the winner. 1 in 75. Okay. We're getting close here. We've had one that's one number off. I'm going to scroll down and see if I get any other bids. Oh, we're another one number off. We're zeroing in. Yeah, okay, I, oh, <laughs> this feed is going fast here. Oh, we got a winner. Okay, Amber Johnson bid 47, or not bid, but guessed 47. So, Amber Johnson, you are the winner of this tapestry, or, <laughs> I can't talk now. Uh, you are the winner of this t-shirt. Like I say, this here is a women's large, Rainbow Warriors, Mr. Tie-Dye T. So, congratulations to a... Amanda Johnson, or Amber, sorry, <laughs> I really can't talk, Amber Johnson, and she looks like she's a member of my channel also, so what you can do is I'll put my launch links in the, the feed here, if you click on that, go down to the bottom and send me your mailing address to one of those places, I will package this tea up and send it to you, the other thing, if you want me to sign it, Make sure to let me know that, and I can sign this for you down here in the bottom corner. If not, I can send it out just like this here. But a congratulations to Amber. So just send me a message, and I'll get that out to you. Okay, so. Let's see. I think that did go a little bit better there. So we'll erase that number now so we're good to go uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and do some Q&A here so if people have questions I know there was a bunch of questions being asked in the feed and I tried to answer as many of them as I could while we were going but of course 
as the feed scrolled up, I didn't have time to stop it because I wanted to keep with the format of doing the tutorial first. So if anybody has any questions for me, you can go ahead and ask those now and I'll answer what I can. And then after this here, uh, I'll close this out. I don't know, maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes, however long people have questions for me. So, and yes, Yuchika, you were the winner of the tapestry, so you can message me. So if Yuchika and Amber both message me, or Yuchika, you can just pay. That's fine too. Let's see. Just curious, do you do custom orders? If so, how does that work? I Okay, I am not taking any new custom orders right now. I, I have a bunch of my own projects, plus I have a bunch more videos that I want to create for you guys. So I have just a handful of orders that I'm still working on, and when those are done, I'm going to put a hold on any custom orders uh, right now. Uh, but yeah, the, the gnome tie-dye dress, that one there... Uh, the gnome is a stitch design and I'm really not doing very many stitch designs at all so but I do have a few videos on the process uh, do you use urea yes I do what I'll usually do when I'm mixing up my dyes well actually I guess I mix up 32 ounces of dye at a time so in my cup I'll add my dye powder and then I'll with uh, 32 ounces I put two tablespoons of urea in with my dye mix. So that's how I use the urea now. What dyes do you use? I use fiber reactive Procyon dyes and I buy them from Dharma. Uh, the other places I bought from is Custom Colors in North Carolina and Grateful Dyes in Colorado. And one other dye house that I've heard about is Procam. Oh, and let me adjust my camera a little bit now that I'm done with the tie-dye portion. Uh, have you tried a custom color black? Uh, yes, I make my, my own black. What I have done, uh, this bottle here says better black on it. But I had tried better black, I tried new black, and then recently I tried raven black. And I liked all three of them, but they each seem to have their little downfall. You know, they, they bled or they were just a little bit off shade. So what I tried was mixing some of each, all three colors in a bottle of dye. And then I used that and I really loved how the colors came out. So I took all of my dye powders and I poured them, all the black ones, I poured them all into one jug and just shook it up. So that's what I use for my black mix now is a mix of three different blacks. And I have like a, a five gallon jug. So whenever that starts getting low, I'll buy better black, new black, and raven black. And I just pour all three of them in, shake it up. So that's my black mix. The other tip for making your blacks darker is to batch for longer. Black is one of the colors that takes the longest to set up. So if you batch it uh, a minimum of 24 hours, but I prefer 48 hours for my blacks. And now I just kind of started leaving everything for 48 hours. Okay. Oh, I guess I went backwards in my questions. Can I replace sinew with dental floss? Does it act in the same way? Uh, you can use uh, dental floss, but it's not as strong as the sinew. But I have used it. You just have to not pull quite as hard on it. So I usually will do like maybe two wraps, pull it tight to pull the, the tension out, and then wrap it a couple more times and pull it tight and wrap it a couple more. So with the, the dental floss, I was probably wrapping it anywhere from six to eight times to make sure that I got a white line. But it's definitely not as strong as the, the sinew. So you can't really wrench on it. But it is something that you can use when you run out of something. I've used it in place of my kite string also. Uh, have you ever tried a tie-dyed hat? Any tips or tricks with those? Uh, yes, I've done the bucket hats. Let me grab one of my old ones. 
this here is several years old and this one let's see i think i actually did a spiral on this one here but yeah they're hard to work with just because there's not much fabric once you get it twisted then you got this brim oh sorry <laughs> i adjusted my camera so you guys could see me and okay so yeah this here is a is an old hat here and I did a spiral on this one, but really with the, the hats, there's not a whole lot you can do. So I either did a spiral on them or I kind of scrunched them up. And, but when you get down to the brim, then that's just a little bit hard. So as it was scrunched up like this, I would put my dye on, but then I would open all my cracks and crevices up to check for white spots. And so I could squirt more dye down inside there. And then the same thing with the bottom of it. You, I mean, hats, they're just a pain. Uh, when I've done baseball caps, I'll scrunch up the, the back of the hat the same way. And then the brim, I usually will just kind of drop some dye on it. So I'll put one color on and let it spread out a little bit. And then I'll put another color on that will mix well with it. So like I don't put orange and then green right next to it because when they mix together, they'll be brown. Um, but yeah, hats, you can dye them, but they're just, there's not as many fancy things as you can do with the hats. That's the best I got. Uh, let's see. What's the purple color that you used on your shirt? This one here uh, was, I used uh, plum and then, or no, that's blue violet. Anyways, I used plum for this here and then I, I watered it way down. So probably if I was working in a bottle like this here, I'd probably add plum dye here and I'd fill it the rest of the way up with plain water to get this shade of purple. I just, uh, a lot of times my, my lighter colors, I just like to mix one of my other colors a little bit lighter. So that's what I did for this purple on here. And mostly I did that because the purple is one that uh, sometimes will kind of block the black lettering. And I wanted to make sure that this here could be seen. Uh, so that's why I lightened my purple on here. But I do kind of like that purple. That's a, a nice one there. Let's see. Oh, I think I'm a little behind here. Let me see if I can catch up. Have your new glasses got yet? Nope, I haven't gotten them yet. They are supposed to be here. Uh, they said within a week. It's been a week and a couple days, so hopefully they'll be showing up soon. But, yeah, these ones, I, I think uh, you guys ask about my glasses because these ones slide down and I usually will scrunch my nose and make funny faces to try to hold them up. <laughs> Uh, better, better black by Carl. Yes. <laughs> How much salt do you use in a 32 ounce bottle? Um, I don't always use salt, but when I do, I'll use two tablespoons in a 32 ounce bottle, which then means one tablespoon for 16 ounce bottle. But I don't always use it. If I do, it's usually in my black or my turquoise. Let's see. What tutorials do you have coming up? Love your work. Very inspiring. Oh, thank you. Um, let's see. I do want to do the Merkaba on a t-shirt. Um, I was probably going to do a couple. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I don't remember. I, I tried to make a list, but now as I look at that list, it's all kind of old stuff on there. Um, I do. I was going to do another one of my super spiral videos where I dyed the spiral in a bunch of different ways again. I did one of those that had, I think, eight different ways of dyeing the spiral. And of course, there's many, many more. And I was doing a meditation last month. And all of a sudden, I got all these different ideas for more ways to dye the spiral just to give different results. So I was going to do another one of those up. Um, let's see, probably some more ice dyeing videos. Although I want to do some of my own projects with the ice dye just to kind of practice up with that. And then, like I say, do more of those videos and try to get a little bit more detailed with that. Right now, I still feel like I'm a, a newbie when it comes to ice dye. And just because I haven't done over the last 10 years, I may have done maybe 100 of the ice dyes. And compared to the many thousands and tens of thousands of t-shirts, I've done liquid dye. So that's why I think ice dye and I'm still a newbie. Uh, will there be more? Will there be? Will 
<laughs> if I can talk. Will you be doing any more stitching videos? Yes, there. I will be doing one more of those. Uh, it probably won't be until later. It might be something that I just work on over time. But the VW bus front is the other stitching video that I wanted to make, just to show a little bit more detailed and how I, I work with all the little bits in there and gather up the fabric. So I did promise one of those out. I will be doing one of those, but yeah, right now I'm not doing uh, custom orders, but that one I will be making a couple t-shirts to do the video. Let's see. Are you going to do another giveaway? Uh, not on this feed here. I will be doing, I do have a, another men's tea, an extra large, a Hanes like this that I'll be giving away probably on Facebook. And then I have another women's tea that's the more cut style, uh, fitted style or something. I'm not sure what they call it, but it's a little bit narrower than this one here. And that one I will be giving away maybe over on Instagram. So if you guys follow me on Facebook, uh, Mr. Tie-Dye page, that's probably where I'll do the giveaway. Let me put this in here. So you can find my links and the launch links there to, to my Mr. Tie-Dye page and to my Instagram page. But I will be doing those giveaways probably sometime in the next week or so or... I don't know when, I don't want to lock myself into a time frame, but yes, I will be doing more, but not on YouTube right now. That was a long answer for a simple question, wasn't it? Let's see. Hey, Mr. Tide, I'd use Centerpol as a pre wash, then soda ash soap. Um, yeah, if I'm going to do a pre-wash, I will add just a little bit of Synthopol in there. And then, well, after it spins out and the tapestry is just barely damp, then I do put it right into the soda ash soak. I don't, I don't feel a need to dry it after a pre-wash. So I just put it right in. I soak for 20 minutes and then I spin it out again in the washer so that it's barely damp. The main thing you want to check for if you're spinning out in the washer is that the water isn't spraying during that spin cycle. Uh, some washers have that. And if that's possible, if you do have that and it's possible, maybe set the spin cycle to halfway through the cycle and turn it on. And if that's not possible, maybe turn your water off at the, the input there. Let's see. If so, when? Yeah. So, yeah, the giveaways, like I say, will probably be within the next week. And that will be on Facebook and Instagram. So make sure you're following me there. We doing... Okay, I think I'm caught up to these questions. What tutorials do you have? Come? Okay, I got that one. I'm needing to see a VW... Okay, yep, that's the one. So I don't know if maybe I you asked or put that in there. But, yes, the VW bug... Uh, bus front is the one that I'll be doing the video on. What colors did you use on your tee? So I used uh, turquoise. The green is my bright green that I mix up with uh, three parts lemon yellow, one part turquoise to make my bright green. This is lemon yellow here, deep orange, fuchsia, and then this here is my light. Uh, I used plum and I watered it way down. Maybe like you know, one, one part plum and five parts water, I would say. Uh, that's at least get you in the ballpark. Love their beard. Thank you. Yes, I've been growing the beard for, I've had it long for th over three and a half years now, I believe. And my lady, she braids it for me. So Julie, she spends that time, takes about 10 minutes to do the cornrow braid. And it just keeps it nice and neat on my face. Also gets it up off my chest. So thank you. Okay. I think I jumped around here. Sometimes when I scroll, it jumps a whole bunch. Are the tapestries you, you get ever come with not 90 degree corners uh every now and then they they seem like they're just a little bit off and i don't know if if it was something that was cut wrong or if the fabric was just twisted a little bit but yeah every now and then because i have four pegs that i stretch my tapestry on to take pictures 
and most always it fits tightly on there but every now and then one of the corners will be a little bit loose so that tells me that the it's not perfectly square the same size as the other tapestries and that's just I, I just take that as sometimes it happens um, at the point that I discovered it it's not worth trying to contact Sunshine Joy and you know it's just one of those things that happens and I just kind of go with the flow. I like to just roll with it. I'm an easygoing guy. Uh, did you make a video of your tea? I love it. Uh, no, but I have made uh, rainbow spiral videos. I think in my magical, the mystical magical spiral video, uh, the rainbow spiral is one of them. Although that one I think was a three color spiral. Okay, when will we be doing your next giveaway? Okay, I think I covered that. It'll be on Facebook or Instagram over the next week. Uh, I just got the idea to use hemostats on a hat. Oh, yeah, that might be cool. I haven't tried that yet, but any way that you can to kind of gather and fold things up. Yes, good idea. Thank you, Alan. I love it when people share their ideas out there so that other people can see them and utilize them. Okay, I think I'm way behind on the questions. I'll try to catch up here. Uh, how do I contact you for the shirt? Would Facebook work? Yeah, if you just message me on Facebook through the, the launch links there, then I can uh, just send me your mailing address and I will get this tea uh, off to you. And like I say, make sure you let me know whether you want it signed or not. And I can sign it or not sign it. It doesn't matter to me. Uh, hey, I made it to the tail in. Oh, nice to see you, Marty. Yep, you zoomed in here. This one actually went faster. I think this new format, uh, but what we did this time was an incline ice die. So. As soon as we're done with this, you'll be able to go back and watch the whole thing. But I think it, the, the tutorial part took just 45 minutes, so it was pretty quick. Does it take more dry dye than liquid dye? Uh, if you're meaning the doing the ice dye compared to a liquid dye, um, I can't say for positive one way or the other it does seem like when you do an ice dye you use more of the powder than you would with liquid but it, it's a it's a close thing so in the beginning i think i was adding too much powder to my thing and it was leaving a whole bunch of glob and i didn't need that so i've slowly been cutting down and i'm finding that it might be uh pretty close to the same but i think my my impression is that it still takes a little bit more with the ice dye than it does with the liquid. But the, the colors that you get sometimes, the different designs, patterns you can do with the ice dyes, it just makes it worth it to use that extra amount of dye in there. Uh, can we buy the t-shirt where? Uh, yeah, if, if you wanna buy one of the, I haven't made uh, the dyed ones up yet to sell. I'm gonna do some of those, but if you wanna get just the t-shirt blank, Right below the video here, there's uh, Buy Mr. Tie-Dye Merchandise, and you'll see five t-shirts there. Uh, those are all the, the blanks, just like this here, where you can buy the t-shirt and then dye it yourself. So, and then eventually, like I say, I will be making more of these here, and I'm gonna have them screen, screen printed myself here locally, and then those will be out for sale. And I do have a couple other logo ideas that I will be developing. So there will be more different designs with the Mr. Tie-Dye. I'm just going to kind of play with that and see what the interest is. But yes, and then also I think eventually I'm going to have um, vinyl decals made with this. Where you can buy that, dye your shirt, and then put a vinyl decal on in either black or white. Okay, I don't think my watch or spit water on this. I didn't think my spit water, but it does. Oh yeah, the the way that I test a, a washer, you can open the lid and if you poke a little Q-tip down in the actuator there, and you can turn it on and see. But if you don't want to mess with you know that, you can toss a dry tea into your washer, close it, and put the spin cycle on, 
and then open it back up. And if the t-shirt's wet, then your washer spits water. That's an easy way to test that. Okay, can you show plumb regular strength? Uh, yes, just one second. Okay, so here is plumb regular strength right here. Make sure I'm in the camera here. And then like I say, when I lightened it up, then I got this here. Yeah, plumb has been my one of my favorite uh, purples from Dharma for many years. I think I probably had that color when I started buying my secondaries uh, just like a year into doing tie-dye so I've probably been using plum for 19 years so I really do enjoy it did you tie-dye that caravan that's on your profile yes I did yeah the the uh, VW bus that's up here in the corner the little white and maroon color one on the blue background Yes, that's one of my tie-dyes there. Yeah, the, the VW bus and the bug, you know, would be done in a similar manner. It's just a matter of drawing on the different design. Uh, the main reason I'm going to be doing another stitching video for the bus is just to show the detail how you gather that up in the inside uh, because the the pot leaf was one of them that's a fairly easy one but then I did the dark side of the moon but that's also you know pretty basic as far as how much detail so I wanted to do one more stitching video to show the detail and the bus or the bug either one of those you're gonna see the same type of stitching going on with that so yes you can watch the bus one and then adapt it for the bug but basically what I do, I cut a, a stencil out for the VW bus and then I can just draw that design on and then I stitch all of my lines and you just do the same thing for the bug. Let's see. Okay, I'm way behind in my questions again. <laughs> Let me see if I can find them. How do you prevent bleeding during washing? Uh, a couple ways is by batching your t-shirts for longer, for one thing, uh, that, that to allow more dyes to set up. And then also by time, uh, if you let, let them batch for 48 hours, by time you're done with the 48 hours, most of the dye is dead, so it's not gonna backstain. But then also using Synthropol or Blue Dawn dish soap in your washer that's going to help prevent the colors bleeding into the white areas. Oh yeah, and Marty uh, said that bleeding, you gotta rinse it also. So I start out by rinsing in the sink in cold water to wash away the soda ash before I open it. Once I've rinsed it for a minute or two in cold water, then I'll turn the water up to warm to hot, and then I keep on wringing it, and that's when I take my ties and stuff off. And I do have a video for washing tie-dye, so you can go back and check that out. If you like, that'll walk you through the whole process of my rinsing and washing. Let's see. Sometimes red fades to yellow. How do you prevent this? Uh, that is something that it really comes down to the, well, kind of dye that you're using. I use fiber reactive Procyon dyes, uh, but also some of those, they have that yellow edge that will bleed out. Um, I use the fire red from Dharma. It doesn't bleed much at all, but one of the ways that you can help stop the bleeding Sometimes it's not it's not a perfect thing, but when I put my red dye on and then I use just plain water, 
So what I'll basically do is I'll add my line of red on right here, like this purple. If I put my purple on right there, then I would add water on right next to it so that the, the dye doesn't spread. Because really, it's not the dye that's spreading, it's the liquid. And the liquid is spreading from the wetter areas into the drier areas. So if your white area is, is wet, like your dyed area, then the dye isn't going to spread because really it's the liquid that's spreading, not the dye. So yes, just adding a little bit of water is going to help that, but also changing the type of dye or the color of dye you use is really going to be uh, the most helpful thing. I put two dyed shirts out on my deck in plastic. It's about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Will the heat set the dye? Doing it in three quarters of an hour or three to four hours uh, I I don't know for positive if that's going to be enough but yes the heat is definitely going to speed up the batching time uh, I still do mine for 48 hours and I add heat so I'll put mine in one of these tubs with a lid on it and put it out in the Sun to bake um, but yes I know that I have steam set so that firework tea that I did that looked like a butterfly or a dragonfly or rib cage there was lots of different things but that one I steam set that so I put it in a vegetable steamer and set it for 45 minutes and then I let it cool for 90 minutes and then I washed it so if you have 100 degree heat and you have the shirts in in plastic that's going to help contain the heat and if you batch that for three or four hours my guess is that you are going to get some decent colors out of that but the only way to really know for sure is to try it and see if you like the colors at that point um, you can also do an experiment you could put one out there and leave it for three or four hours you could put another one out there and leave it for six to eight hours and just try different things and see if it makes a difference so I hope that answers your question if you thicken the dye at any time, do you have a preferred ratio to ratio water to thickener? Um, I have a, a video. I can't discuss all of that because I, I usually have to adjust mine. I make up my thick water, and then when I'm mixing it into dye, I'll add some plain water to it, but I don't have an exact mixture. It's just kind of a, a test by looking. You know, I'll squirt some out onto a white piece of paper towel so when I make my thick black dye up make sure you guys can see that I'll squirt some of the dye out and see how much it spreads and if it spreads too much then I will add more thickener to it and if it stays in a really skinny line and doesn't want to soak in then it's too thick so I'll add some more water to it so it's just kind of a judgment thing uh, I've tried to do exact measurements but each time it seems to come out just a little bit differently so I don't have exacts I got a process that you can follow and then you can make your own adjustments from there but that there's two different thickening ones one has the product from Dharma in it the sodium alginate that comes in one of these bags here and then the other product for the other video is the sodium alginate and I got this off of Amazon so this here is a, a finer powder and it seems to mix up quicker but it also sometimes the the paste the powder will still be in there after time and it will thicken anyways I prefer the stuff from Dharma but either one of them will work the other one from Amazon just happens to work quicker uh, because it doesn't take as long for it to dissolve so, but those are, those are the ones that I use, and like I say, I do have two videos for that. Let's see. When the ice melts, do you batch the same with heat? Yes. I will go ahead and uh, put this rack down on something, uh, one of my other tubs there, because I don't need the water down under there. And I'll put a lid on and then I put it out in the sun and that provides the heat. Uh, by the time I'm done batching, I have a nice bit of condensation built up inside. And in the winter time, I will stack these tubs next to a heater vent so that I still get heat in the winter time. 
Oh, thank you, Alyssa. She's saying make sure to like the video. We got 65 likes on it so far, so I appreciate that. Anytime you guys like and share my videos, it just helps the algorithms in YouTube to show my channel more often so more people can see it, so I appreciate that. Let's see. I have to buy a blank shirt and dye it rainbow demons. Have you ever attempted a dress tie dye that you wear in a more formal setting? Uh, no, I haven't done anything. I've done the, the cotton dresses, and I've done some rayon dresses, but they were all... Those are a tie, like for men. Oh, a tie. A dress tie. Okay. Uh, the only way that I've done the, the ties is by dyeing the silk fabric and then having it sewn into a tie. Uh, some of the, the ties that I, I got from Dharma, they have a... Uh, a lining in them and when you wash that then the lining kind of bunches up so the only way you can do those ties is if you take that lining out so you can cut the stitches dye it and then put the lining back in but I found it easier to just have the the ties made out of silk fabric but if I ever could find a nice cotton tie that might be something to try and tie-dye. Thank you, Julie, for catching that for me. What about stickers? Oh, yes, I do plan to do stickers. I just I haven't got that point yet. I'm getting very close. I only have just a handful of custom orders left that I'm working on, and that will kind of free up some more of my time because I do have, like I say, I want to get some stickers out. I do have another design or two that I want to do with the t-shirts and get the, the screen printing done on some of the ones that I've dyed to sell. And so, yes, you can look forward to more Mr. Tie-Dye Rainbow Warrior uh, gear coming out, uh, I'd say, within the next few weeks here. This was just the first one. I wanted to, before I kind of put them out there, I wanted to order some to see what the quality of the t-shirts t-shirts were that came in and like I say these were Haynes and uh, Gildan that I got off of the YouTube in the different sizes uh, I just got one of each the one drawback is the toddler size doesn't come in white so I got that one in I think light blue light gray and light pink so you could still dye those it just they just didn't have white in toddler but yes stickers coming up and I'll probably do the Rainbow Warriors and stickers, but I also want to do some of my tie-dye designs and have them made into stickers. So I'll see what I can figure out and find a good sticker place. So yes, those will be coming soon too. Thank you, Annie. Uh, How do you like the plum? Yes, I, I, I love the plum. Like I say, I've gotten some other purples in over the years and tried different ones out, but the plum has been my one of my constant go-tos for purple uh, for, like I say, I think 19 years. The first year I, I bought just the primary colors in black and I did a lot of color mixing uh, to get my secondary colors. Uh, one thing, I couldn't get a, a decent orange mix just for mixing my fuchsia and yellow that I liked. So that's what I, I also found the, the deep orange here, and I really do enjoy that one. Um, but then at that point, that's when I bought the plum and then also the emerald green. Those, those three colors have been my, my secondaries for 19 years now, and I do have a bunch of other shades, but those ones are my favorites. I think I said that two or three times. So I apologize. Okay. I think I'm getting somewhat caught up, but... Let's see. Fairy Liquid here in the UK asking the crowd more than Carl. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, if anybody can help Saucy Mare in the UK with the failing Blue Dawn, I'm guessing you can't find it there. Oh, okay, Mr. Tie-Dye, how do you lighten the plum dye? Uh, for that, like I say, I usually will just mix to get this shade here. I think I mixed about this much in this bottle here. So I would say probably one part of the mixed plum dye and then five parts uh, water or four parts water. Anyways, that'll give you at least a, a general thing. And then the way that I test it once I mix it is I put a drop on here. Let's see if I can find my... Yeah, so here's the light purple. So you can see, I'll move this over. So I, I usually will put the drops on and let them spread out a little bit. And then you kind of see a general color. It's not the exact color that you're going to get on your shirt. This here shows up a little bit darker, but this here was this purple dye here. So it, it does lighten up some from there, but it's just a matter of just mixing just a little bit of one color and you do the same thing for any of them. I, I have a, a light turquoise also and I do the same thing. I just put, you know, maybe a quarter of the bottle in the this, this full strength dye and then I add the water to it and voila, light dye. Let's see. Okay, it looks like Alan says he puts his sodium alginate, he heats up the water in the microwave and shake like crazy. Yes, I use a hand blender for mine, and I just use uh, water straight from the tap, but maybe even hotter water is going to help blend or dissolve that sodium alginate quicker. Okay, I think I'm getting close to the bottom here. Thank you guys for hanging in there with me as I try to answer these questions here. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I... I will ask a third time. Are you going to do a video on the Kenny style, please? I apologize. I must have missed that. Like I say, my feed is jumping fast. And as I scroll back, it jumps far. So I just... I missed your question. But uh, no, I won't be doing a video on the Kenny style until I can go to California and hook up with them and do it in person with them. Uh, they, they've kind of locked down that style and they want to kind of keep control over how it's put out there. I know they put a little bit of information themselves on how they do their Kenny style. Uh, I've played with it, but I haven't done their exact style. I've kind of taken their stuff and done it in my own way. So I'll probably be doing a video with, I call, uh, orbs. But that's not the same thing as what they're doing. Um, but they did invite me to come down and do a collaboration video with them. So at some point when I can travel down to California, I will hook up with the Kenny's and is, well... This is something a conversation I had with them several months ago. I'm assuming that it's still a, a, a good thing. I will talk with them first, but if I do a video, it will be done with them. So thank you, Happy RN Hippie. And I apologize for missing your question before. Yeah. Oh, and Kenny is just uh, the name Paul Kenny. He's a tie-dye artist and his son Thomas. They just do a, a certain style with orbs. If you go into one of the tie-dye pages and just search for Kenny, I'm sure you'll see some of the thing. They just kind of have their own name on it. It was probably given by the other dyers, just like the Ron Star was named that because of tie-dye Ron. He was the one that developed that and taught so many people. So 
Sometimes the, the name of the style is attributed to the dyer who came up with it. Okay, I think I'm about caught up here. I'm going to scroll once again, see if I have any other questions, but we're probably going to close this up soon. Uh, yeah, here's a question, not a question, but really a statement. Uh, Carl says, blue because of the pH. I wonder if fairy pH is different from color to color. That part, I don't know. Uh, as far as the, the Blue Dawn dish soap, uh, that's just what I've heard, is that the Blue Dawn is pH neutral. But I don't know that personally. It's just what I've heard other people say. And uh, But that's that is something important. You don't want to have... Uh, add pH into your wash. So a lot of detergents, they have soda ash in them. So if if you wash your tie-dyes for the first time with a regular detergent, you could be reactivating the dyes. So that's something that you do want to check is the pH level of your soap. That's why I recommend the couple that I know about. Uh, one third one is a carpet cleaner that I've heard some people use. It's called Folex. That's also pH neutral. So Synthropol, Blue Dawn, or Folex are the things that I've heard about uh, dyers using. And then the next best thing from there, if you have just regular detergent that has soda ash in it, I would probably opt for, for no soap over a detergent like that on the first wash. Hi, Mr. Tie-Dye. I am 11, love watching your videos. Me and my mom watch all the time. We love to do it. Awesome. Nice to see you, Alyssa. And yes, I, I love it when people can take these videos and use them to improve their skills or to be inspired by them to go out and create. So you're welcome. And I will keep on making these. Uh, another uh, channel to check out would be Teeny Tie-Dye. She is another girl. She started tie-dyeing last year. She's 13 years old and just recently started her own tie-dye uh, YouTube channel. So check her out. She might even be in the house today. I'm not sure. But she's 13 years old. So I love it when kids get in, get involved with, in the arts because I, I didn't get started in tie-dye until I was 35. I wish I would have started much sooner. Anyway... Okay, Josh Ripple. <laughs> yeah, the Ripple design, uh, that one, as far as I know, is Josh Shep that made uh, that one, the original, at least that's who I bought the tutorial from. So that's another, the Ripple design is another one that I won't be making, but a, a design, a video does uh, exist you can purchase that through Josh and support him he's a fantastic artist does some beautiful work and shared that technique out there through a video uh, I believe you have to go over to his website which is pushrainbows.com what is your favorite tie-dye color for me I, I love j the the rainbow most of the time when I'm doing my things if I don't have a color palette in mind I just do, do the rainbow sometimes I do a, a modified version of the rainbow like this one here I put in black and aqua instead of fuchsia and yellow but I love to, to play with the rainbow and sometimes I'll substitute different darker colors out for them so that's my favorite color is rainbow Oh, turquoise. <laughs> yeah, way to call me on it, Saucy. Okay, yes, last week I did say turquoise because turquoise is one of the colors that I, I use up uh, most frequently and have to make more of. So, okay, I guess when it comes right down to one color, Saucy Mare cornered me into turquoise. What size shirt do you wear? I wear a size extra large. Let's see, where are we at? I like 
Shripple. <laughs> yes, good one. J Ripple, Shripple. Yep, that's a good one. We'll have to run that by Josh, see what he thinks. First time I ever did, I was eight years old. Uh, I was at summer camp. Yes, a lot of people have that experience at summer camp. And I, I know that there's a, a large group of kids that their first time tie-dyeing was at school because I went into a whole bunch of schools over the last 16 years and did tie-dye. And I don't know how many now, but I would say over 10,000 kids I have worked with over the last 16 years. And now through these YouTube videos, who knows how many people I've worked with. But one-on-one, -on -one, I'd say at least 10,000 kids have come through and tie-dyed with me. And they will have that as their first tie day experience. There will be a whole generation. Rainbow Warriors for life. Awesome. <laughs> no, no problem. I, I did it myself. Sometimes I forget what I say in some of these live videos. And people ask me a question. And I have to try to go back and find where I said something. Besides Dharma, where's another good site to buy dye by the pounds? They're out of most colors at the moment. And I need some dye. So the other ones that I have bought from is Custom Colors in North Carolina, and I bought from Grateful Dyes in Colorado. And one other place I have heard about is ProCam. So those are some of the other dye houses. Um, I could also post a link from the Paula Birch website. She has places to buy these dyes around the world, and there might be some smaller dye houses listed here let me i'm finding the link right now that's the thing i know there's probably a lot of places that are running out of dye because there is a shortage going on just with i'm sure it has to do with the whole shutdown and everything so this here is the Paula Birch website that I just put in the link there. And if you click on that, you'll see places, other places to buy. And like I say, they might be some of the smaller places uh, around the U.S. or also in other countries. But you might be able to find some Procyon dyes through them places. Those places. Them places. <laughs> uh, my stepmom's first tie-dye experience was with me last summer. Oh, that's awesome. So you did you teach your stepmother how to dye or stepsons? Uh, not stepmother, stepsons to to dye. Uh, let's see. Okay, well I think I'm gonna close this out. We're getting on to 320 right now. So that'll put us at under two hours. Wow, that's pretty good. Well let me let's take a peek here and see how my ice dye is doing before we close. Okay, so this is looking good here. So I got I put just a little bit of that black over top just because I wanted a little bit of darkness for my brighter colors to run down underneath. That was the kind of the vision I had there. So looks like everything is melting good. It does look like I might have a little bit of white left up here at the top, which was something that I wanted. So anyways, we're going to just let this continue to melt. And when it's all done, then I'm going to batch that for 48 hours. And then, of course, I'll do the reveal probably on Saturday just because I have to wait for the ice to melt before I can batch it. Okay, so yes, I'm going to close this out. So thank you guys all for showing up and hanging out with me today. I love my Wednesdays and I love my Rainbow Warriors. And like I say, if you guys want to get yourself one of these, but down below the video, you can buy one and dye it up yourself. And eventually I will be making some of these myself and dyeing those. And those will be available in my store. Uh, I'll put a little notice out here on YouTube when I do have those ready and then also eventually I will have uh, the decals the vinyl decals that you can buy so those are all in the process but for now the the place that you can buy these is right below these videos so thank you thank you for showing up 
peace, love, light, and laughter out to everybody. You guys have a awesome week, good weekend. Oh, we have 4th of July. Uh, it's hard to believe we're in July already, but we have 4th of July this weekend. So you guys enjoy, but try to do some safe social distancing as you get together for 4th of July. Here in Oregon, they've mandated... Uh, masks for everybody in indoor public spaces so we'll be wearing our masks here and mom we'll see you next week actually we'll call and see how things are going i got to make sure that we can still travel back there but anyways we'll talk about that and everybody else you guys have a good week i love you all namaste